Hey friends, is it possible to run software that requires high amount of resources in the cloud for free? In this video, we are going to be using Stable Diffusion, which is a text to image AI software that requires a high amount of resources to be used on your machine. But in this video, we are going to be using Google Collab, which will allow us to be able to run this software in the cloud for free using Google's resources instead of your local machine. So let's jump into the video and let's go ahead and use Stable Diffusion in the cloud. The very first thing we need to do is go to our Google search page and let's type in Stable Diffusion Google Collab. And when you type in Stable Diffusion Google Collab, probably the first thing that's going to pop up is the Stable Diffusion IPYNB. Let's just go ahead and click that. Now, one of the very first things that we need to do is once we go to this, we can see that it's from GitHub and we're on the Stable Diffusion IPYNB. One of the very first things that we want to do is go ahead and click this copy to drive. Now, when you click the copy to drive, what that's going to do is it's going to copy this file into your own drive and we're going to need to open it up in a new tab. So it's going to copy this over into your own drive so you can use Google Collab in your own Google Drive connected to your GCP environment. So here we can see that we're using Stable Diffusion and Stable Diffusion is a text to image diffusion model created by a couple of researchers and engineers and that it's powered using Hugging Face. We don't have to use any kind of tokens or anything to get this working. So if we scroll down, we can see how to use the Stable Diffusion pipeline. And before we look at how Stable Diffusion works, let's try it out a bit. And it's a very simple process. So once you're here, we need to make sure that the GPU runtime of this specific notebook, so not of your machine, but of this specific notebook is set up correctly. And we can do this just by clicking this green arrow. And we can see that it's working by this dotted line going around the green arrow. And boom, we have our GPU set up correctly on our notebook and on GCP. Now, if we scroll down, it'll tell us that the next thing we need to do is install the diff users as well as Scrippy, FTFY, and Transformers. And then also to install Accelerate, which will help get the loading much quicker. And we can do this again by just clicking the green arrow. What this is going to do is going to be using pip install and pip install is a Python dependency manager. So we're going to be using Python, but again, we're downloading all the dependencies onto Python and we're using Google Collab and GCP to run all of this. So we don't actually have to run it on our local machine. All right. So that was done in 17 seconds for me. And if we keep scrolling down, it's going to talk about the stable diffusion pipeline and everything that we need to get that running. But here again, we can just go ahead and click the green arrow. What that's going to do is now import torch and then set up our stable diffusion pipeline. Now, PyTorch is a pretty big dependency, so it's going to take a while to download. So as you can see, when we start running this, it's downloading a bunch of different models and text files and dependencies. So when we click that, just hang tight and it's downloading everything we need for Stable Diffusion and Google Collab onto our own notebook and GCP platform. And again, Google Collab is completely free right now. So it is a perfect solution to be able to run some of these really heavy pieces of software that relies on a ton of resources because GCP and Google Collab will just do that all for you for free. So you don't have to worry about any kind of resources on your local machine. And I'll fast forward this. Um, this could take a while depending on your internet speed. All right, and it took me about a minute and 42 seconds for this to be complete. Now, the next thing we need to do is move the pipeline to GPU so we have even a faster connection. So let's go ahead and just run this pipeline. And what this will do is connect this code or this platform into the GPU on GCP and in Google Collab. So this is gonna be awesome stuff, which will just make our application even faster. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and generate some images. So it has an example image right here of a photograph of an astronaut riding a horse. All right, and now let's change this to a monkey riding on a horse. And we're going to want to change this image path to monkey rides horse. All right, so now if we run this, we are going to have to pass in a prompt, which is a monkey riding on a horse. That's going to be the main text that it's going to be using to transform into an image. The next is going to be image, which is a variable image where we're saying we want it as a pipeline and we're gonna pass in that prompt and we're gonna return the first image. 
Now, this is a monkey that's transformed into a horse, a monkey riding on a horse. Let's try this again and just see what it returns. And, and here we see that we indeed did get a monkey riding on a horse. So we can see it right here on Google Collab, what Stable Diffusion returned back to us on our Google Collab notebook. Now, if we keep coming down, we can see a lot more directions. Um, so running the above cell multiple times will give you different images each time. But these images are saved in a unique key called a manual seed. So if we ran this now, we're going to see a image of a monkey riding a horse. But each time we run it using a manual seed, we won't get a new image. We'll always get the same image back every single time. While up here, if you kept running this, you're going to get a new image every single time. But each time we run this based on a manual seed, you're always going to get the same image returned. Now, if we keep coming down, we can see that we can change the number of like how long stable diffusion takes to solve or create a solution of what you're asking for. So right here, if we decrease the steps from 50 to 15, so 50 being a longer way for it to think, if we change it to 15, you're usually going to get a worse image. And you can see it's a giant monkey riding on a little horse. And that's because we're not allowing as much creation in stable diffusion to be able to find the correct answer that we're looking for. So here we can specify the grid that we want. So here we can specify the grid. And here I'm going to say a monkey riding a horse. And we can dictate how many images. So we can see number of images equals three. So we're gonna say this prompt three times and then run it. And what this will do is it'll fetch and run our prompt three separate times and return the image as if it was ran each individually. So here it's gonna take about three times as long to run the application, but we're gonna also get three pictures instead of one. And this is stable diffusion taking in each request, turning it into an image and then returning it to us, but it's gonna be doing it three times. All right, so we can see this is like a human with a monkey face maybe riding a horse. This is going to be a monkey riding a horse, and this is a monkey sitting on a horse. So as you can see, each time it's going to create a new image based on our prompt. And these are not owned by anybody. We literally have an AI model creating these images based on the text in the prompt that we're sending in. All right, so then we can say we want it to be created by a specific grid. So here we can see we have a whole bunch of grids. If we change this to a monkey riding a horse... and we run this, it's literally going to be grabbing this prompt and creating a new image for each index that we need. Whether you are or you're not a programmer, we have a number of columns and number of rows. So columns are three, rows are down. So we're gonna do three by four. We're gonna pass in the prompt by the number of columns. And then we're just gonna loop through and create a list of items. We're gonna loop through each grid square, create an image, add that back, and then present the grid. So this is what that's doing right now. All right, so a potential not safe for work content was detected. So with this is also an awesome part about Stable Diffusion. If it's not safe for work, um, it's going to present a black box. So that is a way for us to know that all of these images are not going to be rated R or anything like that. So this is a Stable Diffusion response, and it's an awesome response if you ask me. All right, so we have a monkey on a horse, a monkey... Um, with another monkey riding on a horse. And you can see that we just have a whole bunch of monkeys riding on horses. So that's exactly what we asked it to do. So Stable Diffusion can also produce images in different kind of resolutions. Um, we can override the height and weight. So this is just saying if we type in a monkey on a horse and we change the resolution, well then it's just going to change the resolution for us. After we played with it a little bit, we can kind of talk about what is Stable Diffusion. And we can see right here that Stable Diffusion allows us to be able to create images based on text in different types of resolutions at different amount of times, all using artificial intelligence and models. And this is awesome, awesome stuff. If you want to dive more into the technical on how Stable Diffusion works, you're free to do that. Leave a comment on this video if you want me to. I can create a video on going into the technicality of Stable Diffusion. But I really don't think that was the point of this video. This point of the video was just how can you use Stable Diffusion on Google Collab so we can use the resources of Google Cloud GCP so you do not have to go through all the installation of using 
stable diffusion on a local machine and having to have all the resources and GPUs and everything to make it work. This was just a walkthrough on how we can use stable diffusion for free. Again, leave a like and comment if you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next.